Welcome back to the Word Expanded, the Gospel Edition. Uh, listen, every day, uh, let me rephrase that, almost every day, uh, you get an opportunity to hear the Word. Uh, do you know that we have we have done a really good job down here of going through uh, the whole Bible almost in the Word, like having it actually read to you, the entire New Testament. Summer has done that, right? The Old Testament, she's well on her way to, to finishing. Right? So you have the entire Bible through Drash Ministries uh, at your disposal to read it just word for word. She doesn't even give any commentary. I could never do it, just for the record. She has it. She's got it. Right? Look at it. We listen. You can listen every day to the word. We're expanding it. That's what I do, right? That's where I add my commentary. So here we go. Matthew chapter 5, verse 31, 32. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. I say to you, everyone who divorces his wife, except for the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery, right? Listen, this is a concept we talk about all the time, right? In the 80s where I grew up, if uh, if you were divorced, you didn't serve in church, period, right? It didn't matter what the reason was, right? It didn't matter whose fault it was. In the 90s and after that, it became about whose fault was it. So we did these investigative committees in church to try to figure out who was at fault so we could decide which one of the two could continue to serve in church. Mind-blowingly dumb, but really smart people came up with that idea, right? We're going to investigate and we're going to decide, right? It kind of goes against the whole forgiveness thing, kind of goes against repentance, kind of goes against a whole bunch of stuff. By the way, we didn't do that for people who are addicted to gum chewing and things like that, right? We, we, didn't, we didn't try to figure out, you know, whether they should serve in the church anymore or not, right? But we, we got this whole concept of divorce. People got the scarlet letter for divorce, right? And again, what God is saying in this in this section isn't about actual divorce necessarily just, right? Again, of course it's about divorce, right? But it's about the concept of what divorce does to people. And let me make this clear. There is more divorce than just a husband and a wife. So there's divorce between friends. Hey, you can have committed to walking your life out with somebody. You can be walking out your life with somebody and then you can get divorced from them. And do you know what that does? It wreaks havoc in friend groups. It wreaks havoc in churches. It wreaks havoc all over the place at work. It wreaks havoc. Just as much havoc as getting an actual divorce from a spouse does, right? We get divorced from people, which means you are committed to somebody and then you decide for whatever the reason. Now, listen, Again, we got all these reasons out there, right? All these great reasons for why we can get divorced from somebody. They let us down. They lied to us, right? You understand, Jesus made it super clear. You cannot divorce somebody because they lied to you. You cannot divorce somebody because they misrepresented something. You can't divorce somebody because they bought too many Swedish fish. You can't divorce somebody because of who they are, right? You, you can't. That goes against what God says. He gives one, one thing, which is, hey, listen, you can get divorced for adultery. I mean, somebody chose somebody else, right? And we can look at that and we could say all the things that that includes and all the things that that doesn't include and whether it's a lifestyle. I'm not arguing any of those things. I'm simply getting you to think about this. This concept goes way beyond a husband and a wife, right? Who have you, who have you walked out on? Who would God look at you and say, you, you've divorced this person and you had no right to do that? I say to you, pray for your enemies. I say to you, bless your enemies, right? I say to you, love your enemies, right? How do you love people, right, correctly? Right? The divorce thing, it's not the impardonable sin. Sometimes, sometimes God will look at things and he'll say, I never even thought you were married. We've talked about that down here. It creates great waves. I love it, right? We stand up in front of people and we say this, that those who put God has put together, those who God has put together, let no man asunder. That means that there possibly are people God didn't put together. I've actually probably married people that God didn't put together, Right? But let me explain this to you. There are also people you've stood up with, you've committed to as in friendship, 
And those who put God, those that God put together, let no man asunder. Be really careful about this whole concept. What are you, who are you divorcing? Who are you, who are you throwing off to the side? And God said, mm, yep, no, I didn't give you permission to do that. Right? Super, super important concept. God does not give you permission to get rid of people. Right? No matter what they do to you. He doesn't give you permission to get rid of people. You might actually get divorced from your spouse, like on a piece of paper, and you still, you still have to pray for them, and you still have to love them, and you still have to be in relationship with them. Last thing, just because it's pet peeve and I'm on a rant. Here we go, right? God doesn't give you permission to love anybody from afar, just for the record. It's Christianese that makes sense up here to us. I don't like you. I don't want to be around you. I've determined that you're dangerous to me, that you that you got problems, right? You hurt me, all of these things. So I'm going to love you from afar. If you can give me a single example in the Gospels of Jesus loving somebody actively from afar, and you can't give me the God's in heaven thing, right? Because God is in heaven and he loves us still close. You can give me a single example where Jesus said, I got to love you from afar. You're toxic for me, right? That, that's a problem, right? It sounds great. It sounds great up here. And you know what it's all about? Protecting yourself. And if you can tell me where it says love always protects itself, then maybe you sold me on it, right? But my Bible says love always protects the other person, right? It always protects. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. So again, if you want to be loved from afar by somebody, maybe you've got another example, right? But I don't know very many people who would like to be like, could you please love me from afar? Right? That, that's not what we crave. That's not what we want. Lots for you to chew on. See you next time. The Word. Expand it. The Gospels.